What's going on guys? Welcome to a video that's long overdue, which was the D&D &D storytelling part, I want to say five, where the last we left off was Arya and Tordek inside the little tavern, um, basically talking about, sorry, something, email, but Arya was inside the, uh, Alright, never mind. It's not that important. There's some email saying I won or something like that, but it wasn't. It was just saying it was announcing winners. Anyways, we last left off about Arya inside the tavern after being attacked. We are. So, I'm so far behind on this. So I'm going to sum it up because I don't know what part exactly left off. And this was basically the mid part of the campaign. Basically, Arya's whole thing about being attacked. Um, she ended up talking with Lily, her best friend. Lily told her that, uh, she'd come with her to a place called Dragon Blight. Dragon Blight is this whole, uh, basically town, or this whole region where a bunch of, uh, dragons go to die. That's, like, their resting place. Um, she was, uh, she was told, uh, basically why she was thrown with random strangers. Um, basically that the relic, the ring doesn't belong to her. Uh, the reason her parents sent her to Dalaran is because she has an ancient blood running through her. Uh, the the blood, the ancient blood, is the uh, the mother of dragons' blood, uh, known as Frenia, who was a tiefling. She was able to use this blood to calm uh, Deathwing, this massive dragon that seeked havoc over the world. Um, but they went to the mage, or they went to Dragon Blight. They end up heading to this uh, huge tower. Um, where they met Vanola and RJ. Uh, Lily was searching to, or trying to find a way to, or basically taking Arya here to almost cleanse her, not really cleanse, but hide her blood. So they were took down into this, uh, the bottom of this huge tower, this dragonborn village. And they met Phinea, this the, the tiefling, the mother of dragons, who's been in cage for quite some time. Uh, Phinea told them how um, dragons killed our village. She wanted to kill them all. She wanted to eliminate any sort of dragon in the entire world as a top. Dragonborn, draconians, anything. It's, she just hates them. Uh, basically, Vernola explained that they need to keep her alive, so they, if anyone with Phineas blood happens to repopulate, Phineas blood will continue to flow, so this is the way they can see that. It basically took um, Arya for Nia into these different holding cells where they attached tubes basically cleansing Arya's blood so it's hidden now and all this all this and they were sent back out where all kinds of stuff happened I think I told you about I'm pretty sure you know about the demon hearts you know about the you know about Kriv the whole Draconia thing where they went on to attack Ranzor. I'm not sure. Maybe. But basically, Ranzor disappeared. Dakoni was still alive. Kriv wanted to kill them all. Turns out, Ranzor was still alive. They had to do an epic, huge boss battle. End up winning. And then they took out. They left. I believe so. But, now I think... Now I think we're ready. I believe so. So. <clears throat> Basically, once they returned back... Oh yeah, the whole crib thing. So after they returned back from the crib thing... Um, talking to the Elemental Mage of Light. Uh, basically saying that... We chose Rain's group. Bringing Tordek. Uh, after the rest of that night, the next morning they woke up, went down to their keep, and noticed that uh, the Elemental Mage of Light was here, as well as everyone in Rain's group. Um, the Elemental Mage of Light said it was time. The group said their goodbyes to Rain and Tordek, and they're all set off. While the group messed around for a little bit, trying to think of what to do, uh, Audria, the woman inside Kriv's Blade, uh, went to talk to Vash, kind of waking up, um, says she needed to talk to him about something, took him into Kriv's room, 
while Kriven already sat there, Ardua held uh, Vash's hand and said, I'm sorry, I know her a little more than you guys may think, when they were suddenly all teleported, the three of them, to a uh, kind of a like a metal floor, this kind of closed in area that none of them has seen before, where Rain's group was completely annihilated. However, Rain and Tordek were still barely alive, very bloody, and on the verge of death. Um, she quickly paralyzed Kriv and began to talk to Vash, um, basically just antagonizing him and saying that Aldria was the elemental mage of magic and Aldria was the, the key to opening this vault that contained Shadow's powers. Shadow, the elemental mage of darkness, proceeded to then kill Aldria, stabbing her in the neck with this weapon that banished or almost destroys souls so they cannot be reborn and then uh got her true power back she then went back out uh grabbed Tordek and rain and then made vash choose who to keep alive vash chose uh rain to die and rain's neck was snapped and then Tordek was Tordek's neck was snapped as well proceedingly seeming they're both dead before tossing to the ground uh, the Shadow Dragon then was about to eat Vash and Kriv when a large crystal dragon, uh, specifically being the Elemental Mage of Magic's dragon, attacked. Uh, Shadow quickly freaked out and then teleported away. This crystal dragon then was about to eat Vash and Kriv before they were teleported out by the... Um, Elemental Mage of Light. They all appeared in uh, the stone room uh, where King Alistar there, Prince Ad Princess Adeline, Keyleth, and Mordor all standing with the rest of the group. Kind of, they just were all teleported here in the midst of just waking up, so they didn't have a lot of their armor or clothes on or anything, really. And Elemental Mage of Light was talking kind of what happened, and uh, suddenly the guardians in this room began to kind of turn and began to walk towards them in an offensive stance, so they quickly... Um, kind of freaked out, didn't know what to do, took battle with these uh, guardians when, uh, thankfully, um, thankfully, Maldrix managed to kind of save them uh, as a divine portal kind of appeared. Uh, it was dispelled, but Maldrix managed to bring it back. I thought I already made this video for some reason before, but they didn't. So while they were fighting with this, Alistair and Sorth appeared and began to fight these uh, guardians as the group uh, ran out the back door. So Lucy and some of the other council members and Lucy uh, was told by uh, Anaris to take uh, everyone to the guardians' chambers for it's the only major safe place here. So they made to the guardians' chambers and saw that... Um, saw how the gardens were created where basically uh, when the void dragon first came to all those years ago Anaris wanted to strengthen his army before giving the throne to Alistair he has the blood of a dragon strong brave brutal can withstand a lot his wife Nyla contained blood of an angel uh, she became the new Pelor during this time when Pelor chose to s kind of leave his place uh, Anaris decided to combine their two bloods the blood of a dragon the blood of an angel creating the first guardian being Mordred Mordred's Blood was a little more different, though. He had a lot more angel blood than dragon blood. They then decided they could make him better by just doing half and half. But they then it kind of they were a little skeptical at first because dragons are a little more hectic. Well, they decided that if there's ever a uh, if the guardians ever revolt, they have an amulet that can control all of them. However, the amulet uh, was last given to Gilmore. And somehow the Guardians have been taken over, assuming that Gilmore is in trouble. They decided to sit inside this um, this room for about five days when Naras eventually uh, appeared, telling them that uh, there's some heavy da damages. The old hero, the old keep of heroes was destroyed. The guard barracks was destroyed, and quite a few, a few buildings. A lot of our uh, population was destroyed. Gilmore, Lorio, and Sylvanas managed to save a lot, including a lot of the collection of the cathedral. They then talked about um, a 
uh, kind of a meeting of all the survivors the next day in the Warrior Gardens. Uh, Vash quickly ran home to see Katia, seeing that she did give birth to her baby girl, uh, protected by the uh, protected by the guards that they hired, who killed quite a bit of guardians outside. As they all uh, slept the next day at noon o'clock, at noon at noon o'clock, they all went to the Warrior Garden uh, by this little creek next to this forest. Um. King Anaris was talking to everyone, saying he's very sorry. Uh, the Guardians were supposed to be the strongest, yet somehow they were corrupted. Uh, he said it was his fault for going into Shadowfell um, and all this, blam blaming himself for a lot of it, and then decided um, to give up his crown and naming Lucian the King of Stormwind. Uh, Lucian, who was then named the King. Uh, Lucian was kind of stunned, so Alistair seeing... Or not, uh, Alistair Anaris said... Uh, I'll give you some time. Go ahead and prepare your words. And Aris began to talk, uh, basically explaining um, something is wrong. Uh, Peller's light has been disabled in a way. Rumors have started that somehow a cult known as the Children of Cataclysm have disabled it. This cult is a combination of the Neuro Cult members and the Dragon Worshipper Cult. They apparently have banded together to try and destroy Peller's light for good, bringing Cataclysm to the world. His Dragon Knights are looking for the hideout to this cult as we speak. Uh, he also explained that um, the Guardians, when uh, they were fighting them, they were all going in different portals, going somewhere, which didn't make sense. Uh, Lucian thanked him, and then he gave him a talk, as Basha, one of the guards, whispered to Aldrax, saying, I don't mean to alarm you, but I'm sending some dragons. I'm not sure how many are exactly where, but just thought I'd let you know, because Basha is a ranger. Aldrax quickly began to make his way through the crowd, as Lucian began to talk and uh, assist, as suddenly a loud roar began to echo throughout the kingdom as Aldrax yelled dragons. As about four large fireballs flew into the castle behind them. Shortly after, four huge dragons flying with incredible speed as one slams into the castle with claws digging inside the cop top, causing some of the roof to cave in. Fire not just leaked from this dragon's mouth, but its entire body. As this dragon now looking at all of them, a dra another dragon slams on top of the castle. This one's colors are white and blue, a familiar color. As it lands on the castle, the two dragons snap at each other. The white and blue begins to move its wings rapidly, setting, rapidly. suddenly the sky grows dark, as if the sun has now just left the sky. Basta quickly lights a little fire just to see the uh, dragon made it a pure, pure flame opens its mouth and breathes into the castle. As flames bust out of the windows, doors, many openings, the dragon then turns to them as it releases a large blast of fire. As half the survivors here are instantly burned and turned to ash, um, they hear a voice, uh, this loud, terrible voice, um, announcing that uh, the cataclysm has begun and that Deathwing has returned. This massive monstrosity, like a black crag-covered mountain of scales and hide, the head is a spade-like terror spiked with cool red eyes that shine with a frightening malevolence. Rivets of lava and magma are visible beneath this great dragon's scorched scales, and as he flies, the sky turns black and red, just like the sky from a vicious wildfire. Uh, another dragon appears behind the this massive dragon, a blue and tealish treasure as it speaks of Veneer and Riz Zenith. Um, as uh, he then flies off toward the Cathedral of Pelor. Anaris yelling, everyone, if you can make your way to the Heroes of the Towers, keep by the docks. It's one of the safest area. The castle in flames. King, princesses, nobles, come with me. I need to get you out of here. He then disappeared with uh, quite a bit of people. As they battle this flame dragon, uh, trying to just defend off, uh, they are bent by the blue and the kind of the blue and white dragon as they said, we can't do this, we need to leave. As Aldrax is blown about 50 feet back by one of these dragons, he has then teleported out as um, Basha... Uh, and two other of their guards stay and try to give them some time, probably definitely dying in this circumstances. As they run to the keep, they see that a uh, another dragon appears, this kind of a, almost like a, a mountain dragon. And then shortly after that, another dragon, the blue and teal one, kind of appears as they just quickly teleport behind it and began to run inside. Uh, one of the dragons yelling, Kurneth and Korgith. Or Kurneth and Korgith. The kingdom's in ruins. We have much to do. 
Um, as they're, uh, as the dragons start reaching havoc, as the heroes are inside the castle, uh, letting as many people as they can, one of the guards says, we can't let any more people in, we have to close people out. The group then deciding to close the gates, closing a lot of people out as uh, they can hear a breath of uh, some kind of element from the outside and causing all these citizens on the outside to go quiet. Then inside, we don't know what to do. As they uh, begin to heal people, um, trying to think of what to do, Alanon appears, a familiar druid they met with the demon hunters, saying that uh, um, he can take them to Satharoth City in the Feywild. Feywild has not been attacked yet, corrupt and or corrupted by Deathwing. Um, so they said, all right, and they all head to the Feywild, to Satharoth City, where they, so I have a lot of papers, Forwarders. Um, they meet all kinds of people. They notice uh, they they're met with uh, Princess Keyleth, Adeline, Anara, Sylvanas, and a very tear-eyed L'Oreal. So they all greet them. Uh, L'Oreal talks about how Gilmore has died uh, when the dragons attacked. <coughs> he was saving a bunch of the children, and uh, Sylvanas confirmed it that he was charred um, by saving some of the kids quickly teleporting them out, knowing he didn't have enough space left for him to fit in this teleportation circle. Basically dying. Adeline explains that the Draenei wanted to talk to them as they make their way to Aldor's Rise. They're met with uh, these big Draenei people who explain that uh, if you want answers, step inside this crystal. As they step inside the crystal, they met with this Andro Sphinx, uh, who challenges them to say his name. After saying his name, he explains that... Uh, he explains a lot. Basically, he explains his... Uh, I'll just read it. He says, The story is told of a dragon slaying the mother dragons. The mother dragons you met. A tiefling who dreams of eliminating all dragons of dragonborn. Any sense of dragonborn. Craze lost her mind. Been in a cell for over 2,000 years. Only freedom she gets from the cell is the draining of her blood to cleanse others. Funia could be manipulative, deceiving, but she didn't have a pure heart at one point. When combining her blood with Deathwing, she created a magical own item, an orb of dragon ruling. This orb made out of blood of one of the strongest dragons in life, as the ability to rip the rings from a dragon, removing its flight. And what is a dragon without its flight? Further use of this orb... Uh, I lost it. Wait. Further use of this orb can cause the, can cause the dragon to become paralyzed, so the final step can happen, like it was meant to all those years ago. However, at the time believed that there was still pure in the dragons. Instead of killing it, banished it from the material plane, only being allowed freedom if the all elemental mages' blood is combined together to make a key. However, with power this strong comes with a price. The orb is made of pure evil. The only way to use this orb is by allowing it inside your body, your mind. Without strong willpower, the orb will consume you and drive you insane like Phenia. The orb will only leave if it wants, for it has a mind of its own. Killing the host does not do it justice. That would just cause the orb to be teleported all across the lands. That is one thing you need to stop Deathwing and help you in ending its life once and for all. <sighs> Second, you need to find the Dragon Slayer. Your ally Kenwell has left this war if he had the power to stop this dragon. If you can find his body, you will have time to recover what you need from him. Do this or find the original Dragon Slayer for he can help Cryd as well. Third, returning Deathwing cries the blood of all elemental mages. Deathwing was created by elemental mages at first. He was known as Natharian, the guardian of the war. He was freed by powers of the elemental mages. Uh, basically, uh, they would need to kill all, el all elemental dragons. Uh, so they can, you'll be able to forge trinkets, weapons, armors to withstand Deathwing's power. Fourth, once all elemental dragons are slain, once his wings have been stripped and he's paralyzed and able to control, combine all trinkets of the elemental dragon to form the Dragon Slayer spear. However, only one of the Dragon Slayer blood can use this spear. And that's basically all of that. They left. Uh, they explained to Anaris what happened, and Anaris said, "We can't avoid the material plane forever. I can tell you guys somewhere." They decided to head to the uh, the Crow's Hideout where the um, where the what are they called where the Slayer's Guild is hiding so they met there they, were with, they met Lady Teresa who um, told them about uh, when they asked about the Dragon Slayers uh, she explained that there's a, uh, there's a kingdom in the southern region known as Pandaria uh, at least the land called Talong Steps there's a temple of there of some sort which gave their youngest son to dragons they decided, okay, we could head there. Keda greeting them, um, saying that I can take them. 
Uh, we can rather go to the Swamp of Sorrows, contains a temple, the temple at Atal Hakar, which is home of seven hags. Uh, they may have a boat there, or they, they can try the chances at Stormwind. Um, but it is currently overtaken by the Elemental Mage of Lightning and her dragon. They decide to head to Stormwind anyways, uh, sneaking in um, through the sewers, uh, avoiding these guardians and this guy who tried to set him up for a trap. Uh, Aldrax killing him by punching him in the face. They snuck through the castle, uh, met with Mordred, Alistair, and uh, Lucian, and they managed to get them all head down into the um, this uh, this warship and then leave watching a bunch of kids kind of get bashed by these large storm giants. They made their way to Pandaria where uh, this place seems to be unharmed. They had to travel through this thick fog and as they made their way through they uh, saw this huge temple. As they met there they met a bunch of humans. Only humans apparently. Uh, they met a guy named Luke who explained that Camo was their son. And the last dragon slayer uh, that they heard of was called Garen. Um, they said that we can try to signal the daughter of Bahamut. During this time, uh, Vash had to make a wisdom saving throw, which was a scrying. Vash failed it, and he was getting scryed on. Uh, during this, Luke explained that the reason they're hidden and the reason they're called the Mr. Pandaria is because the Mr. Wet cover our home. The Mr. Protect us. We have the ability to... Uh, kind of change the course of boats and flying creatures with mist. We have these four uh, druids kind of maintaining this on the outside. Um, during this time, uh, as they're seeing creature, there was loud screams as winged creatures were headed this way. They were attacked by these wyverns and half dragons. Uh, once they were being attacked, they ran inside, seeming that two larger wyverns were inside. Taking them out really quickly, Sora said, we need to get you out of here quickly. Uh, Luke thanking them, saying that you saved us. Uh, thanks to you guys, we have a new, we have a chance to live again. And they left as Sorath teleported them out to a region of High Mountain, uh, which is close to Torx Bluff, which is the highest mountain that they need to go to, uh, according to Sorath. And that is when we have to end it here, for now. I'll explain what happens after High Mountain. I just have to go to work, unfortunately. So I'll see you guys all in the next video. I know a lot has happened in this, and I'm trying to explain it quickly, but. We'll try to get you guys all caught up. Thank you for watching this video, though. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye.